Hi friends, my name is Bhavya Mangla. I'm IATF qualified auto doing audit for the automotive sector for the last 19 years. I'm again back with a very, very interesting topic and this topic is about Kaijan. And I'm going to talk all about Kaijan from this book of Mazaki Aimi, which was published in 1986. And by the time I am able to complete this particular video, you will understand what exactly is Kaijan, why it is important to us, what exactly is the new definition of Kaijan, what are the five principles of Kaijan, and what is the seven step continuous improvement cycle of Kaijan. <music> Well, in our day-to-day -day life, if you see when the winter approaches, we don't realize that winter has come and we say that, oh, where are my warm clothes? And something similar happens in the summer season also that we start feeling a bit hot and we see that, no, no, I don't want to wear all these jackets and every day. We don't realize because these changes are happening so gradually every day. Something similar happens when we say that now the days are longer, the days are shorter. We don't realize it, but one day we say that, oh, today the sun has set so early. So this is all the gradual change which is happening. Something exactly happens in Kaijan also. Well, Leo Tolstoy has said very rightly that true life is lived when tiny changes occur. Something similar is true with Kaijan also. When we talk about the basic definition of Kaijan, it is of two parts, K-A-I and Z-E-N. So it talks about the gradual improvement or the continuous improvement which happens. And of late, Masaki Imai has a little bit modified the definition of Kaijan. Now as per him, it is in three parts. That Kaijan means everybody's improvement, everyday improvement and everywhere improvement. So when we talk about everybody improvement, intent is that everyone in the organization, it is not only for the shop floor person, but everyone in the organization has to do some improvement in their place. When we talk about every day, so it does not mean that, okay, we'll do some big change someday. Say, for example, we completed our Six Sigma projects three months back. Now, maybe after a year or so, we'll do something more. No, every day we have to do some change. And the third is everywhere. The Kaijan is not only fair for the shop floor, but it is for all and everyone in the organization. Everyone has to see that what needs to be done and how it needs to be done. There are three key aspects with respect to Kaijan. The first is that what is wrong and not who is wrong. The second is how to eliminate the waste or the muda. And the third and very important is how to decrease cost of poor quality. One very important aspect with respect to Kaijan is that in general, the basic conception is that Kaijan means that maybe a worker on the shop floor will make a particular document, maybe a change before and change after, and then it means the Kaijan is complete. The second misconception about Kaijan is that when we talk about Kaijan, primarily the intent is that it is only for the shop floor people and not for everyone in the organization. So it's very important to understand that when we talk about Kaijan, Kaijan is about improvement. And when we talk about improvement, it is across the organization. In fact, there is a terminology which is called Kaijan umbrella. When we talk about Kaijan umbrella, primarily the intent is that anything and every improvement which is happening in the organization, it can be about 5S, it could be about TQMN, Kanban, maybe Toyota production system, Lean, Anything is there, anything and everything which is going to be there is a part of Kaijan. So Kaijan is not something, a standalone activity, but anything and everything which is happening in the organization is considered as a Kaijan. And there are five key principles based on which this entire Kaijan works. The first is talking about know your customer. So when we talk about that, it means what exactly is the expectation of the customer. Unless and until we are clear about it, it's very difficult to do uh, the work in the right direction. The second is about let it flow. It means that it's very important that people in the organization should be aware about the requirements that what exactly the expectation of the customer so that everyone works on that thing. The third is talking about go to Genba. When we talk about Gamba, it means go to the actual place where work has to be done. Because unless and until 
we sit in the conference room and try to find out or resolve a problem we will never know the realistic situation so we have to go to the floor and find out the real reason and then we can find it the fourth principle is talking about empowering the people it's not possible for one two or three person to run the entire organization to make sure that improvement is happening so unless and until we are empowering each and every person in the organization and make them as a part of improvement team, things will not be possible. And the fifth and the most important principle is we have to be transparent. It's also very important that when we talk about transparency, it means that whatever is the result, what is a good thing happening, what is a bad thing happening, it should be known to each and every person. Only then things can happen. So that brings the next thing about the seven step continuous improvement cycle of Kaizen. Primarily we are talking about PDC or the damming cycle. So the first step in this particular continuous improvement cycle we are talking about get employees involved. So it's very important that employees should be involved in the day-to-day -day activity they should be aware that what is happening in the organization what are the challenges company is facing and what are the areas that needs to be improved. The second thing is about finding the problem. Now, when we talk about finding the problem, we can use a standardized approach rather than focusing on everything. We can focus as per PQCDSM, productivity, quality, cost, delivery, safety, and morale. We can identify what are the gaps under each category, and then we can work on that so that we are focused on what we want to improve and it should not be any generic thing that we are trying to do. The third step is about creating a solution. Once we know that yes, these are the problems we are having, then we can look into the possible solutions which can be there in that particular area. And these areas can be a finance process, a sales process, new development process, or maybe a production process also. Once a particular solution is identified, the fourth step is about testing that particular solution, that whether it is going to work or not, rather than implementing something across the organization, it is better to have a pilot project, identify what is good, what is bad, what is the output that is going to happen. Once that is being done, then we have to do the next step that is analyzing the result, that what is the actual output that is coming and whatever we anticipated, whether it is giving the desired result or it is going next. Once the answer is yes, the next step, step number six, is adopting the solution that yes, now the results are positive. Now we'll horizontally deploy not only in one process, but in all the process. And the last and the most important is repeat. When we talk about repeat, primarily the intent is that now we have to make sure that this cycle should continuously move. And it's a never ending process of improvement. Every day, every employee, every process have to make some contribution. This is what exactly is the intent of Kaizen. And certainly when we effectively implement Kaizen, then certainly it results into high productivity, it lowers the defects, eliminates the best waste, encourages the people, enhances their morale, and certainly it promotes the innovation in the organization. One very important thing is that when we talk about the good things, there are certain challenges which are there in the industry. The first and the foremost challenge is that how often top management is consistently involved in the improvement activity of the Kaizen activity. Maybe in the beginning, they may be involved, but later on they think that it's a responsibility of people down the line to work on that. So it's a biggest mistake which generally majority of the top management do. The second important aspect or big challenge which industry faces is that when we talk about Kaizen, we think that it is only the responsibility of workers on the shop floor, they need to do it. And it's not the responsibility of each and every person. And the third and the most important and the biggest challenge which is there in the industry is that at times we feel that it is only for the manufacturing process and not for all the processes in the organization. So primarily if I do a summary, I talked about what exactly is a Kaizen, what are the five principles are there, I talked about the seven steps of continuous improvement cycle for Kaizen and one biggest misnomer is that Kaizen is only making a particular sheet, filling it before and after and giving it. It's not that. But when we talk about Kaizen, it's an umbrella, it's an improvement umbrella under which anything and everything which happens in the organization with respect to improvement, that comes under that. Well, my next video will again be in the same series of training and development and there I'm going to talk about 5S. Well, regularly I'm getting a lot of feedback from your side and they're helping you to understand your expectations. So please do continue that. 
and in case you want to understand a little bit more about this video you'll find a link below if you click that you'll find a blog there and there you'll find this information in much more detail and in case you're liking these kind of videos and blogs you can always share with your friends and colleagues and you can subscribe to my youtube channel and my website bhavyamanga.com